So what are the foundational elements of a good long-term resistance training program? As I've talked about before, in health and fitness, um, there's relatively few concepts, but a lot of different applications of that. When it comes to resistance training, there's so many different ways we can do it. With weights, without weights, machines, dumbbells, um, high load, low rep, low load, high rep. Tons of different ways. Um, and, and as long as we respect a few basic principles, right, we want to build our capacity over time, right? The concept of progressive overload, that we're um, increasing the load progressively over time to, to create the stimulus for our body to continue to adapt and adapt and get stronger and stronger without plateauing, right? We want the training to be specific enough that it's gonna translate to at least somewhat to what we're doing um, on a daily basis. And we want to have enough variety that we're kind of hitting all those different body areas. Um, and so what are, what are some of those, again, foundational basic components? I like looking at it from um, kind of a movement patterns perspective, right? What are the different ways that we move? And so a couple different elements then, and we can plug different types of exercises into this, but, but it's just kind of this general framework. So we would, would want to have like a horizontal pushing and pulling motion for the upper body. Right? So that's like a bench press or a row. And then vertical push, right? What's a vertical push? What's a vertical pull motion that I could have? When it comes to the lower body, some type of squatting motion, and then some type of hip hinging motion, right? Like a deadlift. Um, it's also good to have uh, some rotational elements, right? Back and forth or kind of diagonal movements. To, to kind of round out the whole thing. So again, that's push, pull, squat, hinge, and then having a rotational component. And if you think about it, like that covers a lot of what we do in daily life, right? Oh, I'm gonna put on my seatbelt, right? I'm rotating and I'm, I'm pulling, right? Or I need to get up off the floor. Right? I'm doing a mixture of, of probably like a, a push, a squat, a hinge. You know, I'm, I'm picking up groceries, I'm picking up a kid. I'm gonna hinge down, squat down, and do that motion. And so it's really trying to replicate a lot of the ways that we move in our daily life. And honestly, like that's just gonna engage a lot of our muscles and a lot of our muscle mass, right? As we're doing the, the push, we're involving our chest, our arms, our shoulders, pull, same thing. Chest, arms, shoulders, the hinge, the squat, like we're just, we're using a lot of that lower body mass and, and engaging a lot of those different muscles. And so it's just, thinking of it in, con in terms of kind of movement patterns and those core movements, not necessarily like cores and stomach, although th those are great to have in, in the uh, rotation, but, but core is in like what are foundational movements. Having those just will, will give us a great way to kind of hit all those main body areas and make sure that we're covered, um, not only from like a, a, a working the muscle, but again, working different angles because our, our, our body doesn't move in just one angle, right? It's, it's all over the place. We have a lot of freedom of movement and so, how do I train my body in a way that I'm building capacity in all those different areas and having just those basic foundational movements, again, push, pull, hinge, squat, and, and rotational is really gonna set you up well for, for the long term. And again, it's easy to plug different exercises into that and to make sure that you, you're well-rounded.